A few years back, the Field Museum in Chicago unveiled something pretty incredible. A life-size reconstruction of Tyrannosaurus rex specimen, FMNH PR208, better known as Sue. This isn't just any model, it's the most accurate depiction we have of the largest and most complete T-Rex ever found. Sue's recreation, nicknamed Fleshy, though personally I think Chonky would have been more fitting, shows what this predator might have looked like in life, right down to the muscles and flesh. She's even carrying an unlucky hadrosaur in her jaws, which feels pretty on brand for a T-Rex. Sue's build is massive, which makes sense. She needed all that muscle and bulk to hunt, move, and basically dominate her environment. Forget those old school shrink wrap dinosaurs, this is what a real predator looked like. Now check out the scoots, those bumpy structures around her brows, snout, and even the corners of her mouth. These might have helped her protect her face during fights, or could have been used for showing off to attract a mate. Either way, they're features modern reptiles like crocodiles still have, a trait they share with their ancient relatives, the archosaurs. Moving down to the mouth, yes, lips. Sue's teeth aren't hanging out like in Jurassic Park. Instead, they're covered up by lips, which makes way more sense. Crocodiles can leave their teeth exposed because they're always in water, which keeps them hydrated. Dinosaurs, on the other hand, weren't swimming around all day, so lips likely helped protect their teeth from drying out. Now what's going on with her leg? Well, Sue's left fibula has a massive bone growth caused by an infection, probably from injury. Could it have been a brawl with Triceratops? An accidental run-in with Ankylosaur? Maybe she just bumped it on something. It happens to everyone. And get this, her right tricep was also ripped clean from the bone at some point. Talk about a rough life. Let's jump back to those eyes. Sue's forward-facing eyes gave her something special binocular vision. That means she could focus on a single target, much like humans, and had incredible depth perception. Scientists estimate T-Rex could spot movement many miles away. So yeah, we're not winning that eyesight competition. Alright, now for what's probably the most debated topic, Sue's skin. No feathers? That's right, while some dinosaurs definitely had feathers, the evidence we have for T-Rex points to scaly skin, at least in certain areas. Fossilized skin impressions confirm this, especially around the face. These impressions aren't actual skin, they're molds, left behind where the skin pressed into sediment and fossilized. So why do people think T-Rex had feathers? It probably comes down to Dilong, an early Tyrannosaur that did have feathers. For a while, paleontologists just assumed every Tyrannosaur inherited those feathers. But new research shows that T-Rex and Dilong split off into different evolutionary branches. The bigger tyrannosaurs seem to have left feathers behind as they grew larger. That said, it's still possible that baby T-Rexes had a fluffy down covering that they shed as they grew, or that adults had feathers in a few isolated spots. We just don't know. As for color, most guesses lean towards earthy tones, which help T-Rex blend in while hunting. But without pigment evidence, we're kind of left to speculate. Hopefully this gives you a better picture of what T-Rex might have really looked like, and yeah, it's always a little weird when new discoveries force us to rethink what we thought we knew. But that is what makes science so exciting, it's always evolving. So don't get too attached to the old ideas, stay curious and keep an open mind, because discoveries like this remind us how much more there is to uncover. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.